Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and I'm recording from Sydney, Australia. It's a beautiful sunny day and it is Thursday the 30th of March 2023. So if you're new to my channel, thanks for coming and checking it out. I record uh, knitting tutorials, but I also now record weekly episodes of what I'm knitting and um, so showing off any finished objects, what my current whips are and any knitting plans that I have and if I have any sewing, although I don't have any this week. All right, so I'll just get into this episode. Um, I have one finished object, which I'm wearing. I have two new cast-ons. Um, I'll, I'll show some progress on my works in progress. I have a faux from the vault and then at the end a little bit of chatter about my week if you want to stick around for that. All right, so I'll get into my finished object first. This is the ebb dress that I'm wearing. It's by Olga Boraya Kefelian and I used six different colours. I'll stand up and show you and then I'll talk about the yarn. So it's, um, it's six colours, um, a light grey, sort of a medium speckle grey, um, a roughly semi-solid green, a speckle pink, a roughly sem semi-solid purple and then a speckly pinky purple at the end. So I'll stand all the way back so you can see it finishes around my knee. It is curling a little bit um, at the bottom and it's a little bit snugger than I might have liked. Um, but generally I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I hope you could hear me. I was a bit far from the microphone there. Hopefully you could hear me okay. Um, right, so the colours and the yarn. I used four skeins of Dingo Dye Works Ridgy Ditch and that's this light grey, the green, um, yes, the light grey, the green, this speckled pink and this purple here. So that's, um, and then the other two colours, the very bottom um, and this grey here, that is Skein Sisters Fabulous Sock in uh, Aliens Attack and the bottom one, the bottom pink one is Fairy Dust. Right, and the yarn was held double throughout. So it's a fingering weight yarn, but held double throughout. It, and my gauge was about 19 stitches, which was pretty much right on. My row gauge was a little bit, my stitches were a little bit taller, so I needed slightly less rows, but I used six colors instead of seven that the pattern recommended. Um, so the whole project weighs 472 grams. So um, I used six skeins, but I sort of used about 80% of each of each skein and I'll just use the leftovers in some other stripy project or in the sorrels that I'll um, that I'll make coming up. And what did I learn about it? I guess the thing that I, I mean, this is my a repeat knit. I've made one before. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I did anything differently. Maybe, um, yeah, I don't think I did at all actually. On my first one, no, actually I've done made two of these before. I didn't do the pockets on either of those, nor did I do them on here. I find knit pockets to actually use as pockets not great because it's just, they're gonna stretch out too much. Um, so I just didn't even bother. I mean, I suppose you could put a key or something in there, but um, yeah, I just, it wasn't really what I, the look I was going for. The yarn that was it was originally designed for is Brooklyn Tweed Loft, and it was meant to be mild, so you'd hold two strands of different colors together and then change one at a time. But I just chose to use the same yarn held double and not do any marling. And yeah, I quite like it. Like it is a little bit, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit funky. It's a little bit, you know, but it's, I'm happy with it. I like the colors and I'll definitely wear it. And it is so soft and so comfortable. So it's definitely going to get warm when I'm already wearing it today. I might take it off and like change for when I do my other whips just so I can show them um, better by sort of trying them on. Um, but um, yeah, like it's it's actually really perfect for this kind of weather. So it's 24 degrees here now, which is about, I think it's about 75 Fahrenheit. And um, yeah, like th that's sort of perfect weather sort of um, for this kind of, for knitwear. Cause it, you know, knitting like wool, this is 100% wool, it breathes really nicely. Um, yeah, and it just feels really, really comfortable. Actually, there might be a little bit of nylon content, I'm not sure, but you know, it's mostly wool. So yeah, anyway, really happy with that. And obviously it's a reverse stockinette side is the presentation side. Actually, that's another reason I might change out of it is I'll show you all my ends on the inside because I've woven them in through duplicate stitch and then I just kind of leave them hanging uh, on the inside so that they don't pop through on the onto the right side. So yeah, I'll just show you that when I, um, when I get changed. 
Right, so my work's in progress. Um, the new one I'll show you, this is um, DK weight gusset heel socks in um, Coop Knits Socks Year DK in the colorway Fleet. I think I mentioned I showed this yarn and said that I was going to pick it up at the yarn shop on Saturday when I was teaching there, uh, which I did. And yeah, so that's been done since Saturday and it's Thursday now. So obviously DK weight socks, and I've been knitting on other stuff too, DK weight socks go really quickly. Um, so this is 150 gram ball. So obviously I've got 250 gram balls and I weighed it and I've used 34 grams so far. I think it was actually 52 grams. So I've used 34 grams and I've got 18 grams left. So that's about roughly about a third of the yarn left for the calf. And so that's plenty. Like I'll probably just go for mid calf and that's going to be a gift. So yeah, I'll definitely get this sock finished um, this week. So I'm knitting that on a 3.5 millimeter needle and it's not super, super dense. You know, if I was plenty, if these were sort of to be worn in shoes, I would maybe go to a 3.25 millimeter needle, but I think it's, um, I think for house socks that will be fine. And so it's not hurting my hands too much because it's not too tight. Um, and I thought actually, I just might mention about the pattern, even though the pattern's been these patterns, the gusset heel socks by Wendy Johnson, you know, the fingering weight and the spool weight one, those patterns have been discontinued. Um, they actually, it's kind of like a recipe really, and it's based on um, the Flegel heel. And I'll put um, a link in the, the show notes below because it's basically a recipe that can be taken for any weight of yarn and you just, you know, do a particular cast on based on your gauge. You know, obviously a toe, you can do any kind of toe. Um, I just do a wedge toe. But the real thing is, the real sort of trick is the heel, I guess. And this is the kind of um, pattern that I use for my socks class um, that I teach at Skein Sisters, where you just increase out for the gusset and then you do these short rows and you end up with no holes. It's really quite um, clever. So I'll make a, uh, I'll put in a link to the original sort of description of the flegal heel but I find um, you know when you have a pattern that's written for kind of any weight yarn and any size there can be so many numbers going on the page sometimes it's easier to just have one pattern for one weight of yarn so I've written one out for DK weight for people for the class and then another one for fingering weight because I used to just link them to Wendy Johnson's free one on Ravelry and then it was discontinued so I was like oh okay now I don't want to write exactly the same pattern um, as someone else's but then I realized it's it really is just a recipe and people really want to have like I do I cast on this then I do this and then you know just especially for the first for the first one that you're making of something you don't want to be like well you know do this many plus three minus a half you know like it's just better to have right this is my gauge this is what I cast on and when I get to this many inches this is what I do so um, yeah so I've written that out for DK weight uh, for the class because obviously in a class and you've only got three hours you really need a, a heavier weight yarn and they make really nice you know bed socks um, or you know house socks um, yeah so that's that's my I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about that so yeah we'll put a link to the Flegel heel in the description um, uh, in the show notes below all right, so that's um, that's that one. And it actually, oh, I must say about the yarn too. So this is the leftovers of my um, fingering weight coop. Oh, I, keep, I can't say this probably. Coop knit socks, yeah. Um, that's the fingering weight version. And this is the DK weight version. And I, I'm, this one feels just a little bit limp and a bit insipid. I didn't really love this one. But the DK version, I love this one. I think this is a really lovely, soft, squishy, and I just like the yarn itself. So I can see myself. I'm very glad that my yarn store um, stocks this because I'll definitely be buying more of these and I just see how quickly they knit up. And it doesn't hurt my hands so much. So yes, that's a win. So that's that sock. Um, the other sock that I am still working on is the sport weight ones that was originally going to be the gift and then I realized I just didn't really love this color for my friend anyway. Um, and I showed it to my elder daughter, Mia, and she tried it on and it fits her. And this is actually kind of in her color wheelhouse. She really liked those. And so I sort of said, look, where do you want them to stop? And I've got about four and a half more inches on the, that's why it's so handy when you're gonna give it to someone and they can try it on. Um, it's 
awesome. So yeah, four and a half more inches up the leg and then I'll bind off and start the next one. But I'm obviously not in any hurry on this one now. Um, I want to finish the DK weight ones, then I'll finish these, then I'll do the climb socks. The climb socks keep getting postponed, but right. I don't normally like having two pairs of socks on the needles, but I'm not working on this one right now. I'll finish the DK weight ones and then I'll come back to these. Okay, right. I need a drink anyway now to take, so I'll take a pause and I'll get changed out of this so that I can show you the inside and I can show you my other works in progress and sort of try them on. Right, I'm back. So I've changed this into a white tank top because I think that will be easier for me to show or at least like less background stuff happening while I show my other works in progress. Um, so this is the Il Hadress. So I decided to cast on another one. And this is Life in the Long Grass Merino Singles in the Colorway Chirp, which is just really, really pretty. Um, sort of like a, like a minty green with lots of pink um, pink and sort of yellow and little purple flecks. It's really, really pretty. So um, I've just got those in the ball to stop them from clanging, which is tricky because I want to show it. So how do I do this? Let me see. So I really haven't got a lot done yet, but, um, and part of the reason is I actually cast on, because my gauge is a bit tighter, so my gauge is 26 stitches over four inches and the first one that I made with the wool and rabbit area was 23 stitches I thought oh well I'll cast on like you know do my math and I cast on for size number three instead of size number one but when I cast it on the neckline was just huge I'll put a photo of it it was just so big and it was going to be like out here and I thought well actually even though my gauge is tighter when you're doing a top-down sweater the cast on is really going to affect the neck, like how high the neckline is. And if your gauge is tighter, you can, you know, both stitch and row, you can just keep going down the yoke and then uh, this is a yoke and then a raglan. You can keep going down the increases until you get the correct number of stitches and the correct arm size. Like, so it's no big deal. So just cast on whatever you want, whatever's gonna work for the side, for the neckline. And then when you try it on, you can see, oh, I need, I've got a bit further to go. And you look at your numbers and you say, right, well, I need a, you know, for me, let's say a 33, my bust is about 32 inches. So let's say I want two inches of positive ease and my gauge is 26 stitches. I'll put up here a little, um, you know, my math in terms of what actual numbers I want the final, um, you know, the final body to arrive at. And so I'll just keep going until that. And if I get to that number before I, the arm size long enough, then I can just knit around a few extra rows without any increases, um, just to make sure that I've, you know, I've got enough, um, you know, I've got enough length there for um, so that when I take the stitches off under the arms, it's not going to be sort of all up here and tight. Anyway, so the reason I've changed into a tank was so that I could try this on and I could try a ranunculus on. So I'm going to try and do it without clanging too much. So this is where it's sitting now, um, which I'm actually really happy with because, and so this is size one. If it, the size three had about 10% more stitches, um, or maybe 9% more stitches. So it was really quite a bit further out here. So I'm really happy with um, with where that neckline's sitting. And so then when I try it on, when it's a bit longer, I'll sort of, you know, be working it around there. If, if anything, that neckline's actually even a little bit wider than I would have liked, which is so odd because, I mean, maybe it will end up being a little bit higher up, but um, when, I, when I block it, I haven't blocked it yet. So yeah, anyway, I really, I really like it and I'm excited to be um, to be work doing more on that one. So determined to not have these needles clang. Yep, so that's, you can see it's got quite a rolled neckline, but I found with the airy that actually did like in blocking that. It didn't completely, but it actually sit pretty flat on my neck. It wasn't sitting like that. Um, it was sitting quite nicely. So I'll definitely be um, doing more work on that one. And my other work in progress is the ranunculus, um, my second version. And actually, I'm going to pause and I'm going to get it on to, so you can see what I'm knitting on. I'm knitting on, I think, 80, maybe 60, no, 60 centimetre 
um, and I've got it just past. I've split off for the sleeves and um, I'm working down the body now. And as I work down the body, it will just be stocking it for, you know, I don't know, I can't remember in the pattern, you know, a few inches and then a fair bit of twisted rib. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop and I'm going to knit that off onto a longer circular. I thought I'd already done that and then I'll try it on. Right, back. So that was took a few minutes, but um, I have knit that off onto a much longer circular needle, and that's how I usually try things on. I don't use barber cords or waist yarn or anything. I just am too lazy for that because that just seems like a whole extra thing to do, whereas I can actually get a whole row knit. I do make sure that the kinds of needles that I'm using are both like metal, metal. I wouldn't suddenly switch to wood or whatever. So these are six mil needles, um, and the yarn that I'm using for my ranunculus is Julie Asselin, Julie Asselin, um, Anatolia in the colorway Clementine. And so I'll just try it on. So I'm past breaking off the sleeves and I haven't blocked it or anything yet. Um, and it's meant to be oversized. So I'm, you know, I'm not too worried about, you know, like it's helpful to know that it's, it sits, you know, not way down here or too tight up here. That's gonna be, that's gonna be fine. Um, yeah, so I'm only just past, just past breaking off the sleeves. Um, and I did do, uh, I did do a video for the um, increases. There's only a few raglan increases. I did do a little video on the knit back front, um, and then knit front back, just to sort of um, demonstrate how that's done. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's the that's actually the high neckline, um, but I don't think it's too crazy high. And this is the kind of thing that I would wear it over, and just wear it with with um, you know a white tank and jeans. Um, yeah. So I really like how that's um, coming along, and there's still a fair bit of knitting because I'll do, I will do um, longish sleeves. I think on my last one my sleeves came to about here, and I'll probably do the same thing with this one. So they're my four works in progress. Um, let me think. The uh, next thing is faux from the vault. And I um, this is Beatnik by Nora Gorn. And um, it is a heavily cabled sweater. And I actually used, um, I'll put a picture of that. I love the photo of the model. Um, she's doing a big, she's got this great, blonde bob and it's in this really bright orange yarn and she's doing this jump. Um, anyway, it's just very great photography. So I chose the, the same yarn, oh, sorry, fluff in my mouth, um, Barocco Remix, but a different color. And again, purple, like um, this was, I think maybe one of the first purple sweaters I knit. And this is the colorway eggplant. And I, I feel like I'm such a liar saying that I'm not really into purple when just about everything I've got around me is purple. Um, so yeah, you know, taste change or interest, you know, color um, choices change, I guess, or you go through phases. So this one actually took me three and a half years to make because I started it when I'd just gone back to work full time and I was getting accredited as a teacher because I'd had more than, it's a long story, but I'd had more than five years off with my children. Um, and so when I came back to teaching, I had to go through this whole registration process and it just was so much work plus work full time. Anyway, this, because there's so many cables in this and there's so many different charts, um, and I will just uh, put up a picture of the charts and how many different, like they're color coded and how much to keep track of. Um, so there was just a lot in this, in this sweater. Um, yeah, but it's really, it's a beautiful, it's got a folded over, folded over neckline, um, a lot of twisted rib, just a lot going on and seed stitch on the, seed stitch on the arms. Um, so modifications, I did do it in the, that was another reason I probably had to put it aside. I did it in the round up to the, it's meant to be completely knit in pieces, whereas I did it in the round up to the arms. So there was, you know, a, each cable row had a lot going on. And um, then I think I, d I did do the sleeves flat and seamed them. Uh, and everything else was then seamed. Like I did that, so that is actually seamed up the side. I'm pretty happy with that. 
with that job. I don't know if you can even see it in there. The, the yarn is pretty forgiving too because there's so much interest. There's so much tweed and flex. It's like a recycled yarn. Um, I'll try it on. Um, so after I finished it, obviously I'm really happy with it. Um, I like how it fits. Um, I probably wouldn't wear it with a, you can see that's, you know, I wouldn't wear it maybe with something white underneath. I'd wear it with something maybe black underneath. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's really, the yarn's really soft and squishy. It feels really nice. It's not itchy at all. So it's like a cotton recycled yarn mix. I don't think there's any wool in it at all. Um, so I actually bought this yarn when I was in Nashville at um, Super Summer Knit Together in 2015. And so I started it in 2016 and then it sat for a number of years. And I finally, um, I think what I ended up doing was just picking it up and saying, I'm gonna do five rows every day. And just because I, I wanted it done, but I wasn't particularly enjoying the knitting. But then as I got further up into it and I was more, I think because I just had to pay so much attention, there was so much else going on in my life. I didn't really have the time. So I, I just decided, right, you know, a few rows every day. And I even, um, like I even wrote an entry in my bullet journal of like beatnik, you know, and put a cross on it if I actually um, did it. I might show you my bullet journal um, maybe in another episode. I just bought a new one because my old one's just finished um, or almost finished. Um, so I've got a new one starting for April. Yeah, so um, what else about it? Um, I do, I like this sweater, but I am, and it is pretty, like there is definitely um, positive ease, but not heaps. And I find I don't um, reach for it perhaps as much as some of my other, because I'm really, I'm really moving away from fitted sweaters and more towards more oversized ones. So, um, you know, like my Ingles by Caitlin Hunter. So I'm, I'm looking, um, like I, I do wear this um, in winter, um, even though it's it's cotton, it's a Aran sort of weight cotton. So I don't I wear it, but it's um, it's like in weather like today, it's too hot to wear. So I'm going to take it off. Um, so yeah, I do I like it. It's got a bit of room roominess, um, but I probably am still like the sweaters that I'm looking at making now are even you know, with greater positive ease than this one. This one's not too bad, it's probably got about, actually I'll, I'll, when I stop, cause I gotta stop and grab something, um, I'll measure it. So I'll stop now actually and come back. Right, so I just measured it and it's 34 inches. So it's just got two inches of positive ease, which isn't a lot and my angles have quite a bit more. Right, so, and the leftovers of this, cause I have just over, I have about maybe two and a half skeins left. I will do another ranunculus, but a worsted weight short sleeve version. Um, so yeah, lots of repeat knits in the offing. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I got any brand new knit, like a, a pattern I haven't made before. Mm, I haven't actually. So yeah, that would be kind of nice. I wouldn't mind doing a new pattern, but every, all of my plans are for repeat knits at the moment. Right. Okay. So which brings me to um, purchases. Uh, I bought, well, I bought the two, um, where is it? I bought the two skeins of um, Fleet in, where did I put it? The Fleet yarn for the, the Coop, oh, I can't say this, Coop Knits Socks Yeah DK in Fleet. And I've chucked it down somewhere. Where is it? Here it is. Here it is. Okay. So that is new. I bought two of those and they'll be, you know, in and out of stash very quickly. And the other thing that arrived, which I bought previously, and I'm gonna grab this because it's, um, sorry about the clinking. Um, okay, let me try and sort that out so that it doesn't do that anymore. This mohair yarn arrived, which is for the Ingles, and that's the Madeleine Tosh Pashmina that I'm gonna put it together with. So I'm gonna move into my plans now because I did start swatching. So the swatching that I've done for this, because I was thinking of like, you know, a sort of a pink and a purple. Um, yes, more purple. So I love, absolutely love how this is looking for the base, but I was trying to work out what to put with it. And I don't really love the blue purples as much as the pink, the pinky purples. It's not even pink, it's not even purple really, it's more a fuchsia. So um, I like this better, but I'm still not 100% sure I even love that. So I'll show you the yarn that I'm planning on putting it with. So the blues, 
So the blues here, this is um, some stash yarn that I got um, oh, back probably 10 years ago when I was still doing swaps and things. So that's some Peruvian baby cashmere. And then this was the mohair that I was gonna use for um, the sorrel, but I would have, this is for a contrast color, so I only need like 100 meters and I've definitely got plenty. Of, I think I've got 1200 meters of that, so I have more than enough for the sorrel, so I, I could use some of that. But I don't, I'm not super happy with that one. Um, and then this is the yarn, this is the mohair that I used for my um, uh, first, no, this is my second Ingalls, for the Celadon Ingalls for the contrast colour, but I used a much darker um, colour with it, like um, that was the ha Hazelnitz Lively DK in Alexandrite, so I used that for this one. I really like that contrast, like the sort of the Celadon green with the um, the purple. And this is um, Madeleine Tosh Air Light in the colorway Ruby Slippers. So that's these two together for this one. But I'm just thinking maybe I like this, but maybe this is a bit too bright. I'd really love to hear other people's thoughts on because um, I only need like a hundred meters so and I have a lot of stash of fingering weight that could go or I mean this is sport weight but the Madeleine Tosh Pashmina but I could use fingering weight or sport weight for to hold with the mohair for this it would be totally fine and I have so much um, leftovers like I have this is sort of different baskets of all my scraps and things you know so I could go something uh, something like that that's not quite as bright with the mohair so yeah I just don't oh I might not I definitely don't have a hundred meters of that but th I have so many other options um, yeah anyway um, I'll take a photo of that and pop it in there well I suppose you can see that well enough I'd love to hear what other people think of that if that's um, which one you like better or just a different idea altogether. Um, I don't have much, that's a pretty dark mohair actually. That is substantially, that's quite, quite dark. Um, so if I had a dark, a darker um, color to go underneath it, it would be still nice and contrasty, but not quite as, you know, pink on pink. Um, yes, so I'm not 100% happy with that. Might still need to do a bit more swatching, but that is a definite plan and, you know, a repeat knit and I know that like the two the this one here is Madeline Tosh this one's Madeline Tosh Pashmina with um with a mohair so and I know I love the fit and I know how, I like how it looks so all my numbers will work for that it's really just picking the contrast that um you know I want to get it right right like I want to I want to be happy with it it's a big um you know and an expensive knit so yes so that's my um, plans, but I'm obviously not ready to knit it yet until I figured out what contrast color I want to use. Uh, what else? And I still plan to make the um, the pinky ingles and the purple ingles photos up there. Um, not ingles, sorrels. The pink sorrels and the purple sorrels, and the climb socks eventually when I finish the other socks, um, and the purple ranunculus, the, the purple ranunculus in the same yarn as this one. So, did I already say that was by Nora Gorn? She's, I really love her designs. She's just got beautiful cable designs. And um, I was really lucky enough to um, go to a couple of, uh, I went to a knitting retreat with our um, Knitters Guild and she came and was a guest at the retreat. It, she's just, yeah, she's like such a really um, intelligent and thoughtful woman. And I just really enjoyed um, listening to her and doing classes with her. She was fantastic. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot of plans that I have. Um, I don't have a muscle bra on the needles and I feel, I feel weird about not having one on the needles. I really want to get another one on. So I think what I might use is actually, this is some Madeleine Tosh, um, and it's in a base that I've never used before. I bought it on D-Stash a while ago, so don't get cross at me. I didn't do another D-Stash. This is a D-Stash um, purchase. This is from a while ago. Euro sock. I don't even know if that base is still being made. It's 100% merino wool, 400 meters. 
um, but it's just a color that kind of doesn't go with anything else and I think it will make a pretty muscle bra and I don't know, not necessarily for me, blue's not really a great color on me, but, um, but it is nice on my daughter. And I thought what actually might be um, good is that there was one time I make so many beanies and they just don't even get worn. I had like a stack of beanies that no one had worn. And so a few years ago, I took some into work and like for my colleagues in the maths department and just said, look, people take one. If you like one, just take it home. So I might do that with muscle bros. I have quite a lot. And, you know, if they're not getting claimed by my children or, you know, I've only got one head, I can only one, wear one at a time and winter doesn't last for very long um, here. And I don't like the thought of all of this knitwear just sitting around not getting worn. So I might do that um, in July, like a Christmas, because obviously I'm in the Southern Hemisphere. So like a Christmas in July kind of thing, bring in some muscle bra hats and see if anyone in my department would like them. Um, and the other thing I thought I might do was, because I've talked about a lot of muscle bras, but I haven't really given my numbers, like my, you know, the gauge that I seem to be getting with the fingering weight. And that I think I have mentioned that I usually get up to 136 stitches, but you know, how, what is the circumference that I'm, of the ones that I'm making and how long do I make them? So I thought I might do like a little individual muscle bra video showing the ones that I still have that I haven't given away and, um, and the numbers that I get to in the gauge and the, like, you know, after making a few of them, uh, this kind of length that I like to, to knit them. So I thought, um, if people are interested in that, just maybe make a, co um, comment below if you think, yeah, I'd be interested in seeing that. Uh, yeah, so that's my, um, that's kind of my plans coming up. Uh, no sewing, but I do have two weeks of school holidays coming up and I'll probably do something in those two weeks. I might make one of those town or field bags, um, you know, go and sort of source the supplies and have a go at one of those. Or I wouldn't mind making some kind of garment in the, um, sewing some kind of garment in the holidays. And right, so now um, if you um, have enjoyed the knitting content, if you're able to like and subscribe, if you're leaving me now, um, other than that, I will just do a little bit of chatter about my week gone by and my week coming up. And um, yeah, I'll see you next week if you're leaving. Um, if right, hydrated. Um, so my week gone by, um, just a few highlights. So Saturday I taught at the yarn shop. I only had the one class because my other class got canceled and they're gonna turn that class, sort of a next steps in knitting, they're gonna turn it into a project class, which I think is a great idea in knitting your first beanie. I think I mentioned that in the last video. So I've got that scheduled for the 29th of April, along with socks again on the 29th of April. So I just had, um, I had six people in my class on Saturday for the socks class. And that's the most I've had in a while because like post COVID, we sort of had a limited of number of four. And then now we've moved up to six. So it was a full class. Um, thankfully everybody had done magic loop before because that's the technique that I use in there. And it's just helpful if um, people, you're not sort of trying to layer that skill on top of other skills. So um, yeah, I really, I do enjoy uh, teaching knitting. It's one of my, you know, everyone's usually really happy to be there and excited to, to learn a new skill. Um, so I did the, show them how to do the um, Judy's Magic Cast On to start with and then increasing for the toe. And I usually just do make one lefts and make one rights and then worked up the, the foot a little bit and then I had to use swap outs to help people with the gusset because you just don't quite get in a three hour class there just isn't enough time to teach all those techniques so we do the gusset and so I had some swap outs um, I'll put some pictures of my stuff um, that I sort of set up um, up there and then I also teach um, Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off so there's quite a few skills in that class and people do get a little bit tired by the end so you know three hours is a long time to concentrate so um, so I, was, I actually was didn't mind that my other class got cancelled because they were two three hour classes and that's pretty full on in a day to teach two three hour classes. But that's why I only do one a month because that on top of teaching maths and you know running around with kids and my dad and everything, that's enough. Um, but I do love doing it. I don't want to stop doing it. So once a month, although in April I am doing two because I'm teaching on the 1st of April and the 29th of April. So it's kind of two in the same month, but so, only sort of. So my class on, and also on um, Saturday the 1st, I, my morning class, no, my afternoon class on um, short rows got cancelled. So that's another thing, right? Because there was only one person booked in. So it was on short rows. It's only a two hour class. Um, and I usually teach Japanese short rows, um, wrap and turn Japanese and German. And again, you know, not 
not a project, so they don't tend to sell as well. So I'm, I'm trying to think about how I could turn short rows into an, an actual class, like not an actual class, into an actual project. So what, what project could be something that you could do um, learning short rows, but either finish or get like part way done, you know, maybe it could be like a little coaster or, you know, a coaster with some shaping. Again, if anyone wants to make any comments below of anything that you could think of that could be a, an actual class, even if people don't finish it, something that's kind of project based that you, uses short rows. Because obviously for short rows, I think of them in terms of socks, but, um, or in terms of, you know, but, uh, back of neck shaping or um, sleeves, you know, like or bust shaping, but not an, a standalone project itself. So I have to have a think about what I could um, what I could incorporate it into so it might be a little bit more. Because obviously that one person who booked in, they don't get to do the class and they really wanted to. Because if, if there's two people, they'll run the class. With one, they can't even, the yarn store can't even co cover like my, um, you know, my hourly rate. So, um, so they have to cancel it. So yeah, and I think this might be the second time that class has been canceled. I hope it's not the same person. I would feel really bad. I think what they end up doing then is they sometimes offer um, like one-on-ones. So anyway, that class got canceled. So I only have a finishing tech, like, um, you know, picking up stitches, seaming, that kind of stuff. So that's my class on Saturday. So that's upcoming, but the rest of my week. So I taught the socks class. Um, and actually before I went to the sock class, um, because my morning class got cancelled, I was able to watch my son play baseball with his dad for the first, that was their, f he's 15, so he's just made it into being old enough to, in winter, play with the, with, with the big boys, with the grown-ups. So, and he pitched, he was the lead-off pitcher, and he got a hit, so I was just so um, proud of him. He was really proud of how he played, and it was just really lovely. Um, both my husband and my son are catchers, so this time my son pitched and my husband caught, so it was just... Just so lovely, really, really lovely to be able to, and I was so happy to be able to be there and see at least the first half of the game and then I had to go. Um, but yeah, that was really awesome. Um, yeah, oh, and he's playing next on Sunday, the 2nd of April, so, and I'm not, because um, they sort of alternate between Saturdays and Sundays, so I'll actually get to watch the whole game, so that's coming up. So next weekend, I've got one class on the Saturday and watching my son play baseball on the Sunday. And it, it's in the afternoon, so I get to go to church in the morning and then watch him in the afternoon. And then that's almost it. Like I've got um, uh, four more days left of school next week. So I'm teaching tomorrow and then four more days and then it's Easter and I'll have a good two week break. So I've got so many plans for the break. Like uh, that's what happens all the time. I just, you know, my ideas and plans are bigger than, you know, I've got like a month's worth of plans for two weeks of holidays. One of the things I'd really like to do is um, is to learn a little bit more about the editing. So I just am using InShot, which is um, a pretty basic app that I'm using on my phone. So I'm actually editing on my phone, which is really not easy. And I sort of, I just wanted to sort of see like just, just the idea of you don't have to know everything before you start just you just need to know enough to make something decent but I would like to get better you know I'd like to be able to add music I'd like to be able to put um, you know I'd like to edit a bit better and not be trying to sort of do it on my phone um, so I'm trying to work out whether I uh, just use iMovie or whether I get um, Adobe Premiere Pro I, I haven't decided yet and I feel like whatever one I want to do that's the one I'm that's the new one that I'm going to learn and there's always like a you know, it's like you can ski and then you stop skiing and you learn to snowboard and you have to be prepared to suck and be slow for a while until you get better. And then, you know, then you get better at that and hopefully you'll be better at that than you were at the other. Anyway, I'm rambling, but that's something I'd like to do in the holidays. I'd like to try, I usually use the holidays to try out a few new recipes. Um, I've got my new bullet journal to sort of, um, you know, do all my planning in. And I think I might go, um, my aunt said she's, my aunt lives a couple of hours away up the coast, so I'll probably go up and spend a couple of um, nights with her. She's a, a knitter and I get quite a lot of, like a lot of my leftovers. Like, I think there's a few in here. I'm not sure of these ones, but you know, a few of my leftovers, like this is some of her leftovers that I used for my, um, 
uh, so faded and then this is like almost a whole skein um, so when she sort of finishes something um, I inherit her leftovers which is really lovely um, so I might go visit her for a couple of days and um, she lives uh, on the water a really really beautiful um, town so I might um, go spend some time with her um, in the holidays I think that's uh, is that it oh yeah and um, I have a friend who is a pilot and she is um, she might be watching hi Beck she might be in town um, and I'll get to spend uh, some time with her and she might even come on the podcast I'm really hoping it's actually how we met I won't tell the whole story but we 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 met because I was knitting and we were together on a plane anyway I'm starting to tell the story I won't tell the story I'll tell the story but if she comes on and um, we can do an episode together right so anyway I have blathered quite a bit I always feel like there's stuff that I forgot but then I'll just put it in the next video so um, if oh and I just also want to say my dad's doing quite a bit better I went and saw him yesterday and yeah I don't know whether he just went through a bit of a, a like a like what do you call it like a sort of a downhill and then sort of like or just was a bit um, a flare-up yeah whether he had a bit of a flare-up of his emphysema he seems to be doing a bit better now and um, they just it, in his um, aged care facility they've just changed all of the TVs over so that now he can my dad's Croatian now he can watch the because um, on the old TV he couldn't get the SBS world news and all that kind of stuff for it so now he can watch the Croatian news he's not even that like you know that into it but I think there's something about when you get older perhaps and you start sort of being maybe a bit nostalgic for even just hearing um, you know your old mother tongue because my dad's been here since he was 23 and he's 89 now and he, he fully immersed like he never really got into the whole Croatian community he was like I want to learn English I want to you know be a dink and die Aussie um, but perhaps as you get older I guess maybe there's just something quite comforting about hearing your your mother tongue yeah and even just like reading um, reading your original um, language and everything so Anyway, so he's doing a bit better, which is really, like, that's really um, comforting for me. Oh, the other thing I thought I might show just at the end, just because I put these jeans on, um, made me think about them. I'm going to stand up. I shouldn't do this workplace health and safety. Um, just showing these jeans because I really love these jeans. This is, um, I think it's called Sashiko Mending, and I might do a little bit of more of that in the holidays. I've got a few pairs of jeans. Um, that need that kind of mending with I don't really like holes in my jeans I don't like having cold knees so um, I might actually do um, I don't enjoy that as much as I do knitting I don't really enjoy any of my other crafts as much as knitting but um, but I do like it and I certainly like the end results so I might do a little bit more of that of some of my jeans anyway rambling um, if you've stuck it out to the end thank you so much for watching my channel and uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it please a few things that I've um, asked for comments on I'd love to hear what you think about the swatches the colors whether you'd like to see a muscle bra video or if you want to share what you're working on um, yeah so or just yeah chat away it'd be really nice to um, to hear from you so yeah thanks and I'll see you next week bye